Hi, I'm Graham Glynn, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching, Learning plus Technology at Stony Brook University. And this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches and best practices in teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Aisha Ramachandran, who's an assistant professor in the English department at Stony Brook University. We'll be discussing gathering student input and making mid-course design changes in our courses. Aisha, welcome to the show. Hi. Tell me a little bit about the courses that you teach. I teach in the English department here, and we have mostly small size classes. We teach literature. I teach introduction to drama, a uh, number of poetry classes, upper level courses in 16th and 17th century literature. Okay. And you made some design changes in your courses the first time you were teaching them. Tell me a little bit about that experience. Uh, sure. When I started my first semester at Stony Brook, I was uh, assigned suddenly, before the semester started, a course that I wasn't planning to teach, which was Introduction to Drama. It's one of our basic 100 level courses for non-majors. And the, the goal of the course really is to have students who are not going to be English majors fulfill a deck requirement. And that means that they should read about five or six plays over the course of the semester. Uh, and I found that I had a class of about 20 students, most uh, pre-med or science majors of one kind or the other, who really did not want to be reading a lot of drama. And so, but halfway through the course, I, I felt terrible as a teacher because I found they weren't especially engaged, they weren't especially interested. I thought I had picked courses, the plays that were going to be of interest. I mean, they all had sex and violence of some kind in them, which, you know, usually sells. Um, and and it, it wasn't. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what I could do to just enliven the tone of the class instead of it being sort of a slog for all of us. Um, so at that point, I contacted uh, uh, Nancy, since you were encouraging young faculty or beginning faculty to use the, the TLT Center. Um, and she just suggested, well, you know, why don't you ask them what's, what's not OK? Or why don't you suggest something different that they might do? And initially, I thought, well, you know, how can I kind of mix up the, the, um, the order and organization of the course? Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I should just change the final exam around. It's a drama course. And I'll ask them if they want to do a play instead. Since they are not particularly inclined to write, they aren't really good at literary analysis. They don't really need to be, since it's not a sort of regular English major course. And what I did is I, I just went to class one day, encouraged by Nancy, and said, uh, I'm going to give you the option of doing a one-act play for your final exam instead of doing a written final exam. But you'd have to decide as a class that you were going to do it. Everybody does the same thing. And um, I'm going to step out 15 minutes and let you decide. And so I did. And when I came back, I had this sort of amazing scene where there was one person standing up making notes on the board. And they had taken votes. And they sort of said to me, we haven't finished. <laughs> so, so I said, OK, how much longer do you need? And they sort of like, I said, well, maybe another 10 or 15 minutes. So, so I came back in about 10 or 15 minutes. And they were still uh, at an impasse. And it was interesting because I finally said, well, can I help you? And they said, well, what do you think pedagogically? Is this going to be better for us to do the final exam or better for us to do the play? Which, which really struck me because you know, it's not often that students ask you for your opinion about what you think is better for their learning, <laughs> right? Actually, it's not very often the faculty ask the students what they think maybe is better so. for their learning. Maybe so, so. Maybe the fact that you had done that opened up the conversation. It was. And so we had, actually, that the class period ended up Go, g being sort of given over to a discussion of what was useful to learn about drama and what I thought they should get out of it and what they thought they were getting out of it, mm -hmm. uh, which in some ways I think was uh, much better than just slogging through the plays as we had been. Uh, and so I asked them, well, you know, what, what do you think is important about the drama? And so ultimately I ended up saying, I think that it's going to be a lot harder to do a play. It's easier to take a final exam. Uh, but I ultimately think you will get more out of the course if you do the play. And so I gave them kind of you know the next couple of days to think about this. And ultimately, they decided they were going to do the play. So how did you feel? Did you feel you were surrendering control of your course to the students? No. <laughs> um, I, I think this is also because I'm not, I'm not scared of student interaction. I mean, I run seminar-style courses. And a course is bad for me if the students are not interacting. 
So the moment students start speaking up and feeling engaged and there is some sense of kind of group dynamic within the room, uh, as opposed to my just asking questions and getting you know, one, one word or one sentence answers, the course is better. So it never, so that's, so the point at which the students have taken over in a certain sense is the point at which you know you're doing it right. Okay. Um, so in terms of the learning objective of the course, mm -hmm. they were now not memorizing or going through four or five plays. They weren't getting all that exposure that you had originally intended. No, no, we did that. You did uh, that as well? It, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but uh, what happened was because they were also, I had them choose their own uh, one act play to perform at the end of the course. And at the same time, we were going through the syllabus of reading these plays. But because they were rehearsing for this play they were putting on outside of class, their sense of what was interesting or important or complicated about the plays we were reading suddenly changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. Because what's interesting is most of these students being science students and ultimately not humanities majors in any way, uh, very few of them had ever done high school drama or participated in any kind of extracurricular activity that required them to do you know, group work of a kind of performative nature. So for them, I think it was an enormous learning curve just to, to think because they were having to do uh, this process of kind of putting on a show, uh, to have to think about the text itself and think about what it offered them, what it didn't offer them, what they had, you know, what was worth picking up on, what wasn't. And so any amount of my lecturing about, well, in the drama, you've got to think about these things, uh, fell flat where the fact that they had to actually block out action, you know, across the stage or think about costumes or those sorts of things really made them think differently about the text you were actually reading.